What is going on everybody? DJ Minds here and in today's video I am so excited to talk about the A2000s. I've been waiting so long for this. If you guys have been watching my channel, I actually ordered a hundred of these for myself, 50 for someone else, so 150 total. But I'm only going to keep one of this batch and send the other 11 away. So yeah, I got 12 in this batch because I'm going to be gone for the month of January. If you guys didn't already know that, the entire month I'll be gone. I'm in the army. I have to do some kind of training. Can't really get into details, but I'll be gone. So what's the point of me keeping more than just one for testing purposes and if you wouldn't mind hitting a thumbs up and consider subscribing it really does motivate me to continue to make these videos for you guys by the way guys i was thinking about using this bitcoin which alibaba gave me for whatever reason and kind of like all the photos and videos because i think it looks incredible there's been so much conversation about the rtx a2000 is it as big as people say is it as efficient what's the hash rate like how's it compare to the a4000 i'm going to hit up on all those things in this video towards the end i'm going to show you my hash rate how much we're making and then i'm just going to give you an honest opinion do i recommend buying this product so first thing first is it as small as everyone says actually i wouldn't even use the word small to describe this card this thing is a little baby card on youtube videos it's really small but in real life the first thing i thought was like oh that's kind of cute right like that cute feeling when you say oh about something that's exactly what i felt when i first saw this card so here's the comparison next to the a4000 i don't know if you can really pick up on that that's actually straight right here look at the difference look at how much tall it is pretty much in every way except for it is a little bit wider than the a4000 so when i first reviewed these a4000s i said how small they were but oh my god dude this thing is so tiny probably like a third except for the width obviously the width it's a little bit different that's what it looks like from above here's an angle from the rear just to show you the height and width difference between the two the displays for the a4000 makes a lot of sense the a2000 i don't even know what any of this is so yeah i don't see us using any of these for any reason at all when I first got this box from PNY, I did not order from PNY, by the way, but I was like, okay, it's not that small. Look at it. It doesn't look that small, but in reality, it's that big. So I don't even know why they added this humongous box. Like, what was the point? I mean, granted, I did take out some of the extra stuff that comes in it, but like, what? There was no real protection in there besides a little wrap. You could probably say 50% on shipping PNY if you would actually make the right size box for people. So if we're talking power, how does this thing get powered? This was really unique. I've never had a card like this, but it's fully powered through the riser. That's right, 100% powered through the riser. So for 99% of graphics cards, you're just gonna plug in the PCIe and that's how it powers it. And that is it for the A2000. Plug it into the riser, you are done. There is no Y splitter. There's nothing else to plug in on top, which this was mind blowing for me. And it could save you money, especially if you're doing a couple hundred of these or even 50 of these, you know, that's a lot of money saved. Not to mention the PSU strands, you'd never have to worry about getting more than one. So that's really great for each graphics card. And one more reference of size difference here, guys. This is a 1070. I didn't even get one of my larger cards, like a 3080 or 3090. Look at the sheer difference between these two. That is insane. Okay, so now we need to talk about something important, heat. This is very concerning with these kind of workstation cards. I've always heard, you know, these things, you have to be an octaminer, they have to get special care. And in my experience so far with using the A2000, that is not the case. Now, I have not set up all 12 because again, I'm sending out the other 11 to a friend, but eventually I will figure out with the entire rig, is it an issue? I can tell you right now, I do not think that heat will be an issue for this card, simply because I had it with seven other 3060 Ti which are producing about 130 watts and this had no issue whatsoever in fact the only car i've had issues with in any of my rigs is the a4000 not the a2000 the amount of heat that the a4000 is producing is significantly more than this a2000 okay so let's take a look at ethereum this card excels at ethereum absolutely incredible in my opinion one of the best cards for ethereum if not the most efficient card so, you know, obviously if you're trying to get like the highest hash rate, you would go for like a, a 5,000 or a 3090, something like that. But if you want efficiency, if you're worried about this EIP, the merge coming, Ethereum 2.0, in my opinion, there's going to be some kind of bear market eventually when that happens. I don't know when that will happen, but it's really good, in my opinion, to start going for more efficient cards. And there's none more efficient than the A2000. So I ran this for like over a day. You'll see the numbers here. 
just know that I was getting 42.3 ish mega hash. So we can round that down to 42 if you like. And it's always at a constant 69, sometimes 70 on the watts. The fan I run at 100%, which I might experiment more with 90% because I'm so used to the A4000s where it always has to be 100% or else it's hitting like 75 degrees Celsius. And that's not even memory. And that's also in the winter. But this card, look at that 60. And you could get that down with lower ambient temperatures. I just have my window open. The core is 2010 and the memory is 3200 the power limit i leave at zero it just kind of does its thing and it always seems to max out but as far as efficiency think about that man 42 sometimes you can get that bad boy to 43 44 mega hash for 70 watts i mean that that's just crazy to think about correct me if i'm wrong in the comment section below but to my knowledge the only card that kind of comes close to that is the 6600 xt but it's still not beating this out so here's my 6600 xt rig as you can see they're all getting 32 uh, almost 33 we call it 32 33 mega hash at about 60 watts and amd is never accurate so don't trust this guys it's probably more than that i would almost guarantee that it's more than that but when you're only getting 32 mega hash and you get an additional 10 for the a2000 of 42 that's a massive difference it's about a 33 percent increase but yeah for ethereum i would say there's really no better card than the rtx a2000 at this current moment and if you think there is one feel free to let me know red panda mining did an excellent video comparing the most efficient cards and he also came to the same conclusion that the rtx a2000 was the best this top line here is going to be the a2000 on ravencoin nothing crazy Easy here to be honest with you 13.44 14 you know i let this run for like a couple hours but i was really starting to see a pattern here that it's not that great on ravencoin it didn't really matter what i changed as far as the memory and the core i've tried a lot of different things in this case i used 100 on the core and 28 20 on the memory i've tried 500 i've tried 100 i've tried a thousand it wasn't really a major difference between 13 and 14 the kapow algorithm moves so much up and down so it's really hard to say but i think a good average is about 14 i've seen some people on the internet getting 15 watching some youtube videos and I mean, 14 is fine. If you really want to round it up and say 15, go ahead. But you can see that the A2000 on Ravencoin really does not perform that well. Here's another example where, again, it's showing you around that 1400 and the core was 2010, 3200 on the memory. And again, it's, you know, it's just the same kind of pattern. There doesn't seem to be too much of a difference on the A2000. And it's got to be because of this wattage, right? So it can only max out at 70 watts. And I think that's why there's so much limitation with something like Kapow. The efficiency is incredible for something like Ethereum. But if you're on an algorithm that needs more wattage, this card literally can't get to that wattage. So that's something to definitely consider. If you're huge on Ravencoin, if you're very pro Ravencoin, you want a lot of Ravencoin long term or flux or something like that you are going to be limited to this 70 watts and i think that's why the overclocks don't seem to matter that much because it really just gets to that 70 so quickly and yeah you can't really get past that number all right so now moving on to ergo this is pretty much performing exactly the same as ethereum well as far as the overclock so you can see i've been running for 25 minutes I don't think we need to run it any further. This is non-LHR, it's pretty straightforward. So 103.6, we'll round that up to 104 on the Ergo algorithm. And that is at 100 fan, 2010 on the core and 3,200 on the memory. This is another algorithm where the RTX A2000 really seems to excel. Anything that doesn't need a lot of wattage and is very soft on the card. I know that sounds strange saying soft, but I think you get what I'm saying. It's not aggressive on your card like a Ravencoin seems to perform very well and uh, i think you would be very happy with these results if you were pro ergo all right so moving on to flux you can see here we're getting about 24 souls this will move this will fluctuate uh, 23.9 you know i've seen 24 so we'll just call it a flat 24 it's a lot easier to work with and this is running anywhere from 62 degrees celsius 63 i've seen 61 and I've also seen 60. Now, please understand that my window is barely open because it was the nighttime. So this definitely can hit the 50s. It really just depends on your ambient temperatures and a lot of different measures. If you look in the top left corner, I've let this go for nine hours. I think I've seen pretty much everything I need to see. Here you go, 24.24 souls, 24, 23. So yeah, 24 is a pretty good number, I would say. All right, so now let's talk about money. This is probably everybody's favorite thing to talk about. So I plugged in 42 on Ethereum. 24 on Zellhash, which is Flux, Kapow, we did 14. Again, you could type in 15 if it's really that important to you. And then I don't know how to say this, Auto Lycos, which is Ergo, so 104 on Ergo. We're gonna hit Calculate here. 
And to no one's surprise, Ethereum was the best at $2.58. I didn't put anything in for power. You'd have to do that by yourself. Ergo in second place at $1.76. So what, 80 cents off, give or take? And then we got Flux, which is $1.40. So that's in third place. And then finally, Raven, $1.32. And again, like I said, you could put that to 15, maybe even 15.5, 2.6 if you want to. And I'm sure Flux and Raven would be very similar, but you can kind of see what's going on here. Obviously, my overclocks are going to be different than yours maybe you're better than i am maybe you're worse than me but th i hope this helps you a little bit just kind of understand what direction that these cards would be good at and what they would perform well at all right guys so the verdict which you've really been waiting for who cares about the money right it's all about the verdict do i recommend this card absolutely i recommend this card this is not financial advice please make your own decisions but please understand one thing as well i got in before the quote unquote hype right before when i got my cards they were less than 500 dollars, not by much so you could call it $500 if you'd like, but it's really different now. If you look at like shop BLT, I think they're $650, $700, something like that. You have to consider shipping. You have to consider the tax and all those other things as well. So at that price, it's a lot more difficult. You know, it's, do I still recommend it? Yeah. If you can't find anything else, but honestly, I don't think you'll find anything more efficient. So if you're sticking with Ethereum, if you're going Ergo, I don't know about Firo. Maybe the next video, we could try something like that out. I would strongly recommend this card. Now, if you're doing flux if you're thinking about raven coin if you think about like kapow algorithms do i recommend it that's something you need to do the math on because it can never get over 70 watts right so since it can never get past that 70 watts you are limited on your hash rate that being said you'll get significantly uh, lower amounts of wattage so what do you want in your farm i'm not sure how to answer that for you you know i personally as mentioned earlier in the video i want more efficient cards you know because i am opening up a farm hopefully this summer if not this fall and I want efficient efficiency is everything to me simply because I think that we're going to go to a bear market. I don't know when the ice age may or may not come, but just in case it does come, I want to be prepared and I would feel confident even if I had to mine something like a Raven coin with that low amount of wattage. Yeah, not as much money, but, but I'm not paying a lot in electricity. And for me, that's very important because the electrical cost is what's going to get you. If you guys haven't noticed what's going on in the world, at least approaching 2022, Things are getting expensive. Electricity is going up. I don't think anybody's electric bill is going down. Maybe it is, but it definitely not in my area. It's certainly not going down. So that's very important to me. And I think that's something that you need to consider if you do plan on buying this card. So think about it. If you were to buy two of these cards, how much mega hash would you get? You get about 84 mega hash, right? So if you go on shop BLT and they're like $700, two of them is $1,400. The price of an A4000 is about 14, 15, $1,600 online. I don't know about shop BLT at the moment, but you'd only be getting 63, 64 mega hash. So what would you rather have 80 Watts or 64 Watts for the same price? That being said, that is one less card. So that's something to consider as well. It's another PCIe slot. You see where it gets kind of difficult. You have to kind of fit it for yourself. But do I recommend this card? Absolutely. It's a fantastic card. It's a really good card. I think a lot of people are going to move towards this card. If I had a choice between this and the 2070, honestly, I would still take this card over the 2070 because the 2070s that I have get around 43, 44 mega hash. And I would prefer this because the wattage is so much better. It's so much easier to work with. Like I said earlier, you don't have to get a Y splitter. It saves you money in the long run. If you're just buying one or two cards, does it really matter if you spend, you know, five bucks on some Y splitters? Not really. But if you're looking at a larger scale, I feel like this card is the go-to absolutely. But, you know, if you're more into 3090s, you don't care about power, you know, you're blessed with like a really good area that has natural gas or whatever you have, the, you're running off of water or something like that's great. You're in an awesome situation. But for the rest of us that aren't in that awesome situation, this is something that you should probably really consider. Something I already know everybody's going to ask in the comment section below, where can you get these cards? Like I said, Shop BLT or Alibaba right now. But please understand that the hype is real, okay? Everybody knows about these cards now. The vendors now know about them. They didn't really know about them when I bought them, so I just got a little bit lucky. I mean, that's what it comes down to is, is when you bought it. And one thing to consider, too, is resale value. Now, in a bull market, these Quadro cards, because that's what this is. This is a Quadro card. Please understand it's not branded as Quadro. The green and white one is. And if it says the word Quadro, avoid it like the plague. But it, you know, these are quadro cards. These are workstation cards. In the bull market, they hold a significant amount of value. Everybody wants these cards. However, in a bear market, they're going to hold probably almost no value. But that being said, why would you sell in a bear market? Me personally, if I were going to sell my cards, I would sell now 
or soon because this is when you get the most profits. It wouldn't really make sense to buy high and sell low, if that makes sense. So, you know, obviously you're in a different financial situation than I am, but I personally would not be selling. So I'm not too concerned about the resale value. If you hold through the next bull market, assuming that there is another bull market, I think you'll be just fine with these cards and you'll be very happy. The one concern that I have is it is six gigs of VRAM. So right now you're good on Ethereum, but to be fair, Ethereum's going away anyways, you know, so you should be fine. I, I don't know. There's a lot of pros and cons to talk about. You have to think about it for yourself. But yes, I would recommend this card. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and leaving a like and a, some kind of comment. And if you made it this far to the end of the video, so I know that you made it this far, please put in hashtag happy new year or something like that hashtag happy new year then i'll read your comment and i'll be like okay we know we're connected here guys uh please join the discord if you've not already done that i will be gone for all of the month of january unfortunately so this will be one of my last videos for quite some time i love every single one of you guys and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace